Greetings loves, it is I, Tactical Girlfriend. Welcome back to the channel. I hope everybody's doing well. Today, I'm going to be talking about low light shooting, specifically with a focus on using white light for illumination. Boop, boop. It's dark outside 50% of the time. We also have very dark indoor environments. And when it comes to using a firearm for defensive use, having some sort of external illumination at your disposal can be a huge lifesaver, literally. So there's a lot of things to consider in terms of hardware and technique and things that you generally just should be aware of with the usage of white light that doesn't really come into play when using a firearm otherwise. And I really do think this is a very, very important topic to cover. I know a lot of you are waiting for me to put out a night vision video, but I really can't in good faith do that without covering this most fundamental topic first. So thank you for your patience and let's jump into it. So why exactly would you ever want to use a white light in tandem with a firearm? Well, first of all, if you are moving around in a dark area with a firearm, it's probably really important to see where you're going. Having something like a handheld light can help prevent you from tripping and having an ND. That could be a horrible, horrible thing to do. So a little bit here goes a long way. Just carrying a light in your kit here can really, really help you. Also, positive target identification is absolutely necessary. If you don't know what you're shooting at, you probably shouldn't be shooting at it. So having a weapon mounted light in this case would be a really, really good way to possibly ID a target. Handled lights are also really good. I'll get into that later. Speaking of all that, aiming at your target is also very important. You want to make sure that you're landing those shots on the target you intend to and illuminating that in the dark. Making sure that you're all lined up properly on target is extremely important. Also, you can produce a photonic barrier with a weapon mounted light. If you have a very bright weapon light and you are in a defensive situation and you do use it to identify a target, you can actually stun the target and cause them to have some sort of temporary blindness in the darkness. It's very disorienting and prevents them from actually hurting you and gives you a huge edge and it doesn't take very much to get a light mounted onto a weapon. These are all very, very good reasons, and I do strongly implore that anybody using a firearm in a defensive manner absolutely needs to have some sort of illumination. I also want to touch on using handheld lights. These are generally just a really useful utility to have. I carry this in my purse everywhere that I go, so if I drop something in the dark or need to navigate some dark area, I can quickly pull this thing out in a jiffy and do whatever I need to do. Now, in addition to that, if I am carrying a handgun for defensive purposes, I do think that this is an essential tool. Main reason being that even if I do have a weapon mounted light, if I do find myself in a defensive situation, I don't want to rely on the weapon mounted light to identify a potential threat. If I happen to actually sweep this over somebody who is just a bystander, for example, and that person is not a threat, then I'm just being rude. And I also violated one of the most basic tenets of firearm safety, and that's to never aim your firearm at anything that you're not willing to destroy. So instead, being able to pull this thing out in a moment's notice, get myself oriented and figure out what is going on in this situation, and then being able to draw my firearm and use the weapon mounted light on that to aim after I positively identified a threat is the way to go. Now there's dozens of different ways to employ a handheld light in tandem with your handgun. You can hold it over your shoulder, you can go from the neck, you can do your cigar grip, there's all sorts of different ways to use this, and it's a really good utility. This is all its own video, so I'm not going to go into depth on the techniques here, but just be aware that there are many ways to be using this. Try them out, see what works for you. I encourage you to regularly practice a few of these techniques because they do have their ups and downs, and they are very situation dependent. I also want to point out that having a handheld light can really help you acquire sights better if you're using iron sights. If you are in the dark and you can't see your iron sights, they're probably not going to do you very much good. Even if you have tritium sight posts, that's not necessarily going to be the quickest way to actually line everything up. So making sure that you're not working with just silhouettes here and using the fringe of your light to highlight your front sight post while identifying whatever you're shooting at is a very, very good added bonus. And I do strongly recommend that you always have these with you if you ever are carrying a handgun. Next, I want to talk about selecting the right light for you. You're going to probably be bewildered by a bunch of different specifications that are thrown at you. Things like battery life, of course, are very important. You're also going to see lumens. Those are really important. You generally want more than less. 
And that's not the be all end all though, because there's also another specification. The measurement is candela. Now, lumen specifically refers to the total amount of light emitted over an area. However, candela refers to the intensity of light specifically emitted in a particular direction. They're similar, but they're not the same. We generally want both of these numbers, of course, to be high because that just generally means a more powerful light, but only having high lumens is only going to mean that you have an idea of the total light emitted. That doesn't take into account how intense the beam is, how focused the beam is. Candela, on the other hand, is. So those two things really, really go hand in hand to produce an effective light. Speaking of which, it's really important that you understand the different kinds of beam patterns that you can be dealing with with different kinds of lights. You can have something with a very wide spill that diffuses over a large area. You can have a very focused beam that is just a very intense bright light on a small amount of area. You can have a hot spot in the center with a wider dimmer spill around it, or just a more even light that is about the same intensity across the board. These are all really important considerations. There's no right or wrong answer for what's better or worse. You just need to figure out what you're using the light for and how you want to use it. You also got things like color temperature. You can have a cooler light. You might want a warmer light. Those are also very subjective. There's, again, no right or wrong answers here, but just understand that these are factors that you really should be taking into consideration when selecting the best light for you. One of the most important aspects of any light is going to be its switch. It needs to be, for one, very easy to use, and you need to be able to interface with it effectively. First of all, I think that in this kind of application, any kind of light should have a momentary mode where if you press down, you have the light on, and once you release, it's off. That's generally how you're going to use it in this application. It's okay if it does have a toggle switch as well, where if you depress it and depress it again, you're turning it on and off. That's fine. That does have some use in limited applications, but at the very least, just make sure it does have a momentary as well. Whatever you do, don't get something with a strobe mode on it because that's completely useless mall ninja nonsense, and I strongly don't recommend that. Also, if the switch isn't reliable, then the light isn't going to be reliable either. Now, generally, you're going to obviously want to make sure that your light is reliable, but also the switch is a very, very common failure point. On this example here, I have my AR with a Streamlight HLX with a factory pressure pad on top of the rail. I was warned by multiple people that this thing can be prone to failure in inclement weather. I've actually had pretty good luck with it until last night where I was shooting with it in the rain, and I did notice that it did have a slight dim flicker to it when I was activating the momentary tape switch here. I did switch to the toggle switch, and that was perfectly fine and reliable, so I did determine it was in fact the tape switch. I am going to go ahead and replace this with a Surefire switch with an AeroSocket tail cap adapter, but the moral of the story is just make sure that it's built well, because that's a very, very common failure point. Now the concept for using a weapon mounted light is fairly straightforward. You only use it for as long as you need to, to identify your target, acquire it, and aim at it. That's it. You don't use it any longer than you need to. You don't burn any more battery that you need to. You don't give off your position if you don't need to. Now you can turn this thing on and use it as something to illuminate your way if you're disoriented or just in a really dark area and you can't see anything at all. That is a very, very specific fringe case scenario, but generally you want to be very conservative with the usage, use the momentary setting, and only activate it for as long as you need to to actually aim at your target. Also, if you are behind cover or concealment, it is very important to be aware of where your weapon mounted light is in relation to your barrel, and that you don't activate it until you clear the threshold of the barrier that you're behind. If you do prematurely activate your light, for one, it's just not going to be as effective, obviously, but also it's going to bounce light back towards you. This can be very disorienting in the dark, it'll blind you temporarily, and it also can illuminate you and give off your position. It's also very important to make sure that you're aware of other illumination sources around you because backlighting can really give off your position very easily. The best bet is to stay in the shadows and use your weapon mounted light as sparingly as you can. It's also very important to be aware of other reflective surfaces. Things like windows and mirrors can bounce light back towards you. If you're using a powerful weapon mounted light, this can be very disorienting and it can also further illuminate you, which is quite the opposite desired effect. 
There's also many challenges to using a weapon mounted light. For one, there is barrel shadow. Basically, if you have a long gun with a barrel that extends past the weapon mounted light, it will probably cast some sort of shadow into the path of light that you have. The best thing that you can do is try to mount your weapon mounted light as far forward as you can to minimize this and understand that in certain configurations, it's simply unavoidable, so train around it. There's also smoke cloud obfuscation. Basically, if you fire a few shots and you activate your weapon mounted light, it's gonna highlight the cloud of smoke that just came out of your barrel. And instead of you being able to see past it, it's gonna be very well lit up and you're not gonna see much beyond that. The only way to really deal with this is to generally just make sure that you stay on the move and that you don't sit in one place for too long, allowing that cloud to build up. There's also some other considerations for gear when it comes to shooting in the dark beyond lights. For one, when you are shooting with irons, as I mentioned before, that can be a little difficult. Yes, you can have tritium iron sights that are meant for the dark, but generally you're still probably going to want to make sure that you can at least illuminate your front sight post, requiring a handheld light to do so, thereby you're shooting with one hand and you just simply don't have as much control or speed. Some people also like to opt for lasers. I personally don't recommend visible lasers. They're kind of hard to acquire in certain situations and they're generally just not a reliable sighting system. IR lasers under night vision is a totally different story. Those are extremely effective, but that's apples and oranges. Personally, I would say that there is no replacement for a good optic and a good weapon mounted light. There's also many other aspects to this that don't involve just using a light to shoot a gun. You need to be able to do your reloads, of course, so you better be able to drop that mag, grab a new one, and insert it in the dark, blindfolded, if you will. If you have other essential gear, such as medical gear, you better know where that is and be able to reach for it in a hurry without actually having good visible light to do so. And that's all I got to say about this boop boop extravaganza. I hope you found this information useful. If you did, please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell too. Also, if you have your own light setup that you want to talk about, please feel free to chime in in the comments below. I also want to give a huge shout out to all my supporters on Patreon. As always, I endlessly appreciate everything that you do for this channel, and I really couldn't do without you. If you want to go help chip in, you can always go to patreon.com slash tacticalgf. The biggest contributors are named at the end of the video. And that's all the photons I got for you today. I really appreciate you all tuning in. Please be good to each other out there. And as always, please take care. Bye!